today I will be removing the center console dash area and uh, removing the dash panels because I will be replacing them with panels that I got from the junkyard. Uh, I am tired of the white. I never completed the white. And I mean, it does look fairly nice when the paint's new, but I did a bad job on the paint. As you can see from here, illustrated there, it has not held up very well. Uh, but that did that about 10 years ago, so 10 years, okay, whatever. Uh, so time to redo it, and I'm going to redo the entire interior in black. So that includes new panels, and I'm just going to put the panels on the car for right now, but eventually I will be painting them, or hopefully dyeing the panels black to keep the texture. That way I don't have to worry about sanding and painting. Dyeing is much easier, it's also permanent, and you can use uh, products like Armorall with it. First thing to do is remove the center console. You have to remove your um, cup holders. In order to do that, you just pull up on here, Oop. a little bit, then there. You take out that piece, pop that up. Now I have done a video on dash panel disassembly before, but I didn't actually remove the dash panel, so I guess this could be an addendum on that. So what you want to do is put your car in neutral, something like that, and then pull this back and make sure that you don't pull up on this, otherwise you might crack uh, this joint right here. So you want to pull straight back. that and then let's see if I've already disconnected it nope you have to then disconnect this connector here which is kind of a pain to get to and then pull up there we go okay so now we'll shift this all the way back to one first and then that just comes right up and then put your car back in the park turn the car off not gonna need that again and there should be two screws right here of course I only have one because I've taken this out so many times that I've lost screws I know I should have a whole bunch of hardware in here screws I'm pretty sure I could find one of those screws in here no oh look they're in here in my little a window cutting. There's screws everywhere. There, I'll just put it back with one of those. Now about the, the only tools that you will need for this entire project will be a Phillips head screwdriver and a pry tool. You can pick up these nylon pry tools from just about any auto parts store, either individually or in a set, for about $5. $5 for a set, generally about $1 or $2 for an individual. And I recommend getting this forked version um, because it gets the the round panel clips fasteners you can pull those up really easy and it's got this nice straight edge here that you can pry things with and be real gentle I used this just the other day in a junkyard to take off uh, an entire door panel real quick works great I highly recommend this everybody needs one of these for their toolbox if they're a 626 MX 600 they work great now beside these two screws there will be uh, two screws possibly holding down the sides, yeah, which I've already removed a long time ago and I just never put them back. In order to get to those, take your seat, put your seat forward, and you'll get access to that. You might have to do it from the, the back seat there area to get a screwdriver coming back this way into it. And then uh, you just lift this whole entire console up and over your e-brake like so. Then you can just put that in the back seat. Here is the emergency brake cable that has a tendency to snap uh, due to inactivity and this e-brake cable can snap anywhere from here all the way to the back of the car so you might have to follow that. Um, I haven't seen any pictures of where it snaps or where it might be most prone to snap. I doubt it's going to be in this area right here. It's probably going to be on the actual physical cable that starts here goes down and then back. And here's the electrical sensor for the e-brake. So if your brake light is always on, 
maybe you want to check that out. That's something that that sh that should be your first step to check out. Either a faulty sensor or corroded wires, oxidized wires. Now that we have the two screws off here, you can see the panels are starting to loosen up. And there should be another screw here and another screw here. Of course, mine aren't there because I've taken mine off so many times. But there will be one more screw right here. Oh, and of course, you will obviously need to take off the panel that's in front of here. There should be a panel right here. Of course, that one's missing on my car as well. Um, but I think that one has three screws, or maybe four screws. One, two, and then three, and then four down there. And then once that panel drops, you can get access to that screw. First, this should come off. Nope, there's going to be a panel clip. And this is why you need your pry tool. Let's do it this way. So much easier. And you get that in there, and then it just pops right out. And now this whole panel should come right out. Oh. And of course, I've got wires running everywhere. Oh, nice splice job, huh? That's absolute shit there. I have no idea what that even runs to. Probably something really stupid that I don't need anymore. Ooh, that's not good. That's either a heater core or AC. That's that's for the ventilation system. And uh, after that panel is removed, you will notice that this panel um, bracket is in front of another panel bracket for this piece. Okay, and you have to get this off. So pry this to the side a little bit. Now you'll see that. There should be a clip here, I'm guessing, somewhere. But be very gentle with this, because you will break it. And chances are pretty good that I'll break it today, so... Okay, there should be a clip in this area. Yep. And as you can see, if you pry here, it will put lateral force right here, and that's exactly where I broke. And that's where I've seen many, many break, is right here. It's because when you try and pull here, it, it breaks there because it's also snapped in right here. So that's the middle point between the two. Let's see. Get some fingernails. Oh, you want to drop your steering wheel? So drop that as down low as you can. And then you can pull that. Same over here. Pull that. Now your panel is free to come out. What looks to be like two clips. We have one here, and then one on the other side of the column. Come down on this side, same thing. So get your tool under there, pop it out. There we go. Okay. And this one might be held in by that glove box screw there too. So in order to get the glove box, you have to drop the glove box, which means take everything out of your glove box. In order to remove the glove box, just push in on this side and this side. Try this one like that. There. Now you have access to this screw. Much better, man. Much better. All right, now after you remove the screw over here, there should be one more screw holding in up here somewhere. It's right next to the bulb. Your glove box bulb is sitting right there in between the latch, but there should be a screw uh, right there, which is missing on my glove box, of course. All right, I guess on the other side of the glove box, you have to remove this panel first. Get your pry tool in. Just pop it. And then, nope, there's one screw right down there. All right, then I have to get the glove box dropped. There's going to be a harness here for your <clears throat> glove box light. This is the sensor that when it's depressed will activate this light, which it's installed there. Then you just twist this and pull that out. Then there's going to be three screws mounting this wiring to the back of your glove box, and then the glove box should come out. 
Okay, I got the new panel in. Fit up just fine. This, the, these panels are from a 94, and they are exactly the same. Fit up perfectly. Same for the glove box. The glove box even has the same exact part number on it. Uh, so everything will fit up, including the sensor. Um, here's the sensor. The sensor is exactly the same, so direct plug and play between 94 and 95. I'm guessing everything 93 to 97 is going to be exactly the same. And here's the bumper stops. As you can see, there's a little slit here, and that's so that you can push it in as you pop it back into place. Do it both on the same side at the same time, kind of thing. And there you go. White, back to brown. And this is not quite fitting correctly here. And it works, but this is deformed because it's from a different car. I'm guessing this panel has deformed in the sun. Huh. Well, and this latch. These latches are a big problem. I had the same exact issue on my glove box. These latches just do not want to hold. I mean, they barely click in there, and just the slightest bit of down pressure will pop at least so you go around a bump or a curve and then hit a bump and your glow box will just drop right down oh there you just gotta slam it shut that's the key <laughs> that fits really good now and then you have your lower shield and that just bolts up one two three I mean that should be fairly easy to do so I didn't even mention that and then just put everything back on in reverse order.